You guys ready to get our hands dirty? Hey there guys, welcome back to Calico Cow Acres. I'm Michaela. It's really bright out here, so I hope you can see me. I can't see you. It is time to plant some peas. I have multiple varieties here that we're gonna plant uh, for, for different purposes. Last year, we got our peas in a little late because we were trying to get the garden set up. It's feeling a lot more streamlined, a lot more manageable, which is what I was hoping for since we don't have to make all of our beds this year for the first time. A couple videos ago, we got these trellises set up. Last video, I mentioned putting chicken wire at the bottom of the trellises for the peas because we have them raised up high for tomatoes. A couple nights ago, I also just got the I got straw set all over the beds and watered them in so the soil will hopefully be moist while I'm trying to plant these because planting in crumbly dry clay is not really enjoyable. We're gonna see how far these get us, but the goal is to be planting snap peas on these two trellises. And that is in this big jar. I don't have the variety out here. I panicked and just went to Tractor Supply and bought some packages of them. Whatever the variety is, um, it was what they had there and I will try and remember to pop it on the screen here. The next ones are what I was going to plant as snap peas and the reason I panicked about it is these are technically sprouting peas, like they're peas for pea shoots and it doesn't say the variety on them. It's like a package from Botanical Interest and I was like, oh my gosh, what if they're snap peas? I had that realization like two days ago. So that's why I went and got snow peas, but I'm gonna plant this, the sprouting. <laughs> I'm gonna plant the sprouting peas as well to see what happens and see what comes up. If they are snow peas, I won't be sad. We do like snow peas too, but I didn't want to not have snap peas, if that makes sense. And then lastly, this little jar, this is sweet pea flowers. These are not edible, do not eat sweet peas. Again, I don't have the variety out here, but I will try to pop that on the screen. And these are gonna go on that trellis. I didn't have very much luck getting them, getting them to pop up last year, but again, we planted them very late last year. I will spin you even further, hoping you can see this. There's a fence along that bed over there with our asparagus and strawberries in it, and I am just gonna try and put the, the potential snow peas, the sprouting peas, along there and see what comes up with those. I think I'm gonna start with the snap peas, though. I guess just to be thorough, I will tell you I did soak these. I soaked them slightly more than overnight, so probably almost 36 hours. I usually try to shoot for 24, but I started them late the other night and I didn't have time to plant them yesterday, so here we are. This life, life, life. What you gonna leave behind? And how you gonna live? Who's to say which ones are gone left unsaid? And how you gonna live today? All right, that actually used quite a bit of the snap peas. I need to uncover the center of this bed and make trenches with the hoe, but I think maybe I'll just stick to doing the snap peas on one half and I'll try to put the potential snow peas on the other half and separate them out so that I know what those other pea seeds are producing, whether or not they're snap peas, snow peas, or something else. I am most definitely not a 
label every single plant in the garden kind of person, especially in this big garden. <laughs> Later this year when I'm like, hey, I don't know what I planted here, it's your guys' job to remind me that I didn't know if those seeds were snow peas or snap peas or something else. So don't forget that because I'm going to. These beds are 16 feet long for reference. The first four feet over here I did the definite snap pea seeds. Then I skipped this whole center section and I started at the other end and did the snow pea seeds. And those, those went a little bit wider than four feet. It's about six feet worth. So that means we have about six feet in the middle. I will probably get more snap pea seeds. I have a rooster next to me. <laughs> so if you hear grumbles, that's why. I'll probably get more snap pea seeds and plant those in that middle space and I'll just mark where the question mark seeds ended. I just gotta cover the mounds back up and then I might water them in right now. I might go plant the sweet peas and then water them all at the same time. I might water them all later tonight, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, instead of marking where I didn't plant the seeds, I just covered up the planted area. So obviously that area is the area that still needs seeds in it. I still need to cover up this side. And then I'm gonna talk to you guys about these little, these little lower trellises for a second and kind of explain why we're doing that. Okay, on second thought, I don't know how well you can see this, but this second trellis where I was gonna plant these flowers, the ground <laughs> underneath them needs some work before I can actually put anything in the ground. It's just completely overgrown. So I think we're going to literally pivot here and we'll just plant them at the front of this long tunnel instead get some nice flowers in this view it's looking pretty brown right now and I'm ready for some green you guys ready for some green oh my duckies I really prefer to film on overcast days but it's so sunny all the time here and that's not a complaint I actually really enjoy the sunshine but it's just really bright <laughs> let's talk about these little low trellises that I have all along the bottom of these two tomato trellises. Last year we put our peas on this big trellis and you can see those are probably anywhere from six inches to slightly over a foot off the ground over there because we're on a slope. Since we want to put our tomatoes on here we we pretty much grow indeterminate tomatoes exclusively. I won't say fully exclusively. I think most of our tomatoes are indeterminate though. We want them to be able to grow as tall as possible so we have these when we moved these trellises, we put them pretty far off the ground. They're about a foot off the ground as well, a little bit more down there. One of our main struggles last year with the peas was they wanted to climb before they could reach the bottom of these. So they would just flop over and I had to train them. So we had all of this scrap left over from our chicken coop build. It was skinny pieces that I figured we probably wouldn't be able to use in too many other applications besides a dig barrier and we wanted to use hardware cloth for a dig barrier anyways. So this is chicken wire and we just didn't have any other uses for it really. We were gonna keep it just in case because that's what you do um, when you have excess materials on homestead. <laughs> keep it for later. But I figured this would be a good way to use it and see if it works and just see if it helps those younger pea seedlings climb faster without me constantly having to nurse them up the trellis. 
Another thing I might do is use twine to kind of hold them against the trellis this year, but we'll just see how it does. Let's go grab our sweet pea flowers and put them on the trellis. our pea water. That's probably not what I should call that, but it's what it is. P-E-A water. Roughly split these guys in half. That's probably half and half. Okay guys, I need to go inside, wash my hands, and do some computer work. I have work work to do. I have a podcast episode to edit, and we are recording a podcast episode tonight. So I need to work on our outline for that. We are going to be talking about seed starting tonight. I will probably catch up with you guys tomorrow. It has been a bit of a bummer of a week in YouTuber creator world for me. I filmed so much good stuff for this video and I went to go edit it the other day. My external hard drive was broken. And I go through about four of those a year at this point. They're two terabyte, just Toshiba external hard drives. And that's just how I store all my footage and it's also how I host my editing program because my computer is ancient and it does not run very smoothly. So I have to keep everything off of the memory disks for it as much as I possibly can. It mechanically failed, so I had to send it in to a company and they're doing diagnostics on it and hopefully I'll be able to get all that footage back. But it also had the last few months of previous videos and other work that I've been doing. Like I just updated our t-shirt designs for Homegrown is My Love Language. I did that design initially like over a year ago at this point. I just updated it so they're a little bit cheaper and the design is just updated in general. So. If you're curious about those, go check them out. They're still on the website, but I did lose the design files. So I'll have to redo those. I just redid our cat face logo so that, I so that I could include Ricky. I lost that. My job portfolio, which I'm not gonna get into that, but with architecture, you kind of need to have a really huge past portfolio of all the projects you did in school and just like your, your best projects, previous work you did. I was just working on updating that and all of that was on there. So cross your fingers for me that I'll be able to get that footage back and you might be able to see some of it at some point if that's the case. In order to keep some semblance of a posting schedule here, I am not gonna be able to show you that in this video. So what did I lose? Our entire footage of planting potatoes and getting that bed set up and just most of this video. So I'm probably gonna show you some cooking in this video. If you see if you see that and you're like, wait, <laughs> she usually does garden projects. That's why. I'm gonna do my best to quickly go through what we were doing for the potatoes because we were trying something new and I really wanted to explain it to you guys and just show you what we were doing so that I have something to go off of when we gauge our harvest. Hopefully it will be a good harvest. But I just, yeah, I wanna keep you guys in the loop with what we're doing for the garden this year because we're changing things up a little bit and with that being said last year this bed right behind me that's covered up with this tarp that was our potato bed last year it's four foot by 12 foot roughly last year we were getting this entire garden set up from scratch and we were tilling everything um and it was just really hectic so that bed we decided let's try double digging as you know we have very 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 solid clay soil here and that was a huge undertaking. I will say it was not my favorite thing. And I, I liked the excitement of digging the potatoes, but it was really, really hard on my body. Double digging the bed initially and also digging up the potatoes. I wanted to try something different this year. And since we are trying to start switching all of our beds to no-till slash no-dig style of beds, let's try a version of the Ruth Stout potato bed method. So that's what we did. Take you over here. Excuse 
my two keys. We've changed some things up in here that you're gonna see in the next video, so I'm not gonna talk about those right now. This is where we've had our ducks, and you can see I've kind of got an edge there. There's a hole there. This whole area was piled up bedding slash straw that they had pooped on, and it has been sitting here since midsummer. I started digging all of it out and used that as the base of our potato bed for this year. So I loaded up that dump cart. I got it from down there in the duck area, brought it all the way up here to the top of the garden, and this is gonna be our potato bed this year. The reason I picked this one for our potato bed this year is because we are gonna be getting some IBC totes, so I can set up a watering situation for this. We got another hose so we can technically water up here now. It's got really horrible pressure once you get this far up the hill. My reasoning is these are getting planted earlier than anything else and we are about to get like two full weeks of rain so I shouldn't have to water them as much and with no dig no till methods it's heavily mulched so you're not watering as much anyway so that's kind of the thought process here. I had a whole bunch of seed potatoes stored in the basement from last fall that I didn't get around to planting and they had all sprouted and they were still doing well so I just set all the potatoes along here on top of that and covered them up with a very thick mulch. <laughs> I will be adding a thicker layer of straw to this, but as I was reading some forums and stuff about root stout, some people said they had a hard time getting their potatoes to sprout through a really thick layer of straw, which that's what it does is it suppresses weeds. Even though potatoes are supposed to be able to grow through a very thick layer, I figure why not just be safe, do a thinner layer of just about a few inches of straw on top first, and then we will go to thicker layers once they've sprouted through that. So it's kind of like mounding, but not really. Um, I just wanna make sure that they're able to have the strength to pop through the straw. We're planting these significantly earlier than we planted them last year, and I think that's not a bad thing. Late, mid to late February seems like a good time to plant them here. So that's what we did. I planted what we had just for transparency's sake. I planted the ones that were in our basement that we had saved from what we grew and store-bought. Some of them were chitted, some of them were not. They were all sprouting though. So we have a mixture of homegrown, store-bought. We were getting some, getting some things from Tractor Supply the other day and they had seed potatoes there and a kind that I wanted to try. I can't remember the variety, but I will pop the varieties that we are growing this year on the screen. Um, so we got a bag of those from Tractor Supply we have some from a local nursery that we also went to and we we couldn't resist <laughs> that were another different kind of red potato and then i also have some on order from some online nurseries that have not shipped yet so those will get planted at a later date i need to make more space for them this bed is completely full at this point so yeah we've got homegrown tractor supply local nursery online and store-bought. It's been about a week now since I planted these and I am seeing growth on them so that's exciting. Ricky, cross your fingers for us that this works. Again, this is just an experiment. You know I love experimenting in the garden and we're just trying to find what works for us on this specific property and I'm sure that's going to change year to year. This is what we're trying this year. I hope this was a decent update and I'm sorry that I couldn't show you the actual footage but hopefully I will get the footage back and you'll be able to see it in a future video or a year-end video. With that being said, I don't have too much more to show you out here right now. There's been a lot going on though behind the scenes and you will see a lot of that in the next couple of videos. But for now, let's go make some dinner. All right, so I am making baked ziti tonight. We're not using ziti noodles. I was gonna use homemade noodles, but the last 48 hours has been extremely chaotic here and not really feeling like making the homemade noodles today. So. We're just going to use shells because I think that's what we have in the basement. However, I do want to make some homemade ricotta to go with it. I'm going to try a new recipe. I usually make it with just plain store-bought milk, but I found a recipe that uses plain whole milk, but it also mixes some heavy cream into it. So I figured I might try it just to see if it's any different than the plain milk ricotta. And I'm going to get that done ahead of time so that when I actually go to put dinner together later, it's a little bit easier. Since I kind of have to make two separate versions of it anyway, um, one for Taylor and one for me, one's going to be vegetarian and one's not. We're going to use four cups, which is roughly what I've got. I might use just a little bit more. 
It's supposed to be a one part cream to two parts milk ratio for this. Um, I do have extra milk though, and this is probably gonna go bad soon, so I'm just gonna do that, and then we'll do the rest with the cream. So that was four cups of milk, and I'm gonna do two cups for this. While that's heating up, I'm just gonna set this in the sink with a flour sack towel, you could use cheesecloth. Someone sent us these off of our Amazon wish list, so I figured I should say thank you for that. We have been using them like crazy, obviously, to wash all these eggs. Um, I'm just gonna let that sit there until the cheese is ready to go in it. Another thing that I forgot about at first, you can add salt into this. I did about a teaspoon. We don't really buy milk too often, mostly because we just don't really drink plain milk. A hard time drinking straight milk. So really the only time I buy it is if we are wanting cereal because we don't really buy cereal either that much, but these are usually like seven-ish dollars a box and our salvage store has them for like 50 cents a box. So occasionally we'll get these as like a little dessert or treat and then I obviously buy milk to go with that. I do think I'm gonna save this jug and try and do some winter sewing with it. Like I said, I don't really buy milk so I don't have a collection of milk jugs to do so, but I might try and do some, some sort of winter sewn things in here. I think this needs, this needs to reach like 185 degrees, so it's still got a little bit to go. This is not the ideal thermometer for this, but it does the trick. To reach the temperature, we are gonna turn that off and I'm gonna pour a little bit of vinegar in here. You're supposed to use three tablespoons, but I'm not gonna measure it. Extra splash for good measure. That was probably like four tablespoons, but it'll be fine. Stir it in. It's already separating. You can kind of see that the whey is separating from it, like the liquid separating from the milk fat. Now I'm just gonna pour this into my cheesecloth. And then I'm just gonna let this sit here for like an hour so it thickens up a little, because I don't want liquidy pasta. It's quite toasty. It's kind of burning my hand a little, but I'm gonna eat this piece. I'm gonna let that sit for about an hour, and then I will get back with you guys and show you how I'm gonna use it in dinner. All right, we're gonna cut up an onion. I usually prefer to use a shallot in baked ziti, but I only have onions right now, and this is just like a plain yellow onion. Um, so we're gonna use this. I'm just gonna dice it up as small as I possibly can because um, I just don't like the big chunks. Thank you. have both the separate sausages cooking on the stove right now and neither of them are seasoned like Italian sausage or whatever they're just plain so I'm gonna add in red pepper flakes Italian seasoning and um, probably garlic and maybe a little bit of onion powder to kind of get that Italian sausage flavor you could also add fennel I don't really love huge chunks of fennel so and I don't have any of it ground up so I'm just gonna leave that out Red pepper flakes. I put a little in mine and a little extra in Taylor's because he likes spicy stuff. And I do not. And then garlic powder. Just 
delicious because you can never have too much garlic. Now I just have a jar of our garden tomato sauce from this summer. I'm just gonna crack it open and then pour half into each pan. I can my tomato sauce pretty plain so that I can use it for lots of things, so I have to season it. You might have to season this if you're using plain tomato sauce. Preheating the oven to 375. We're gonna do about a half a cup of cream in each. Maybe a little bit more. I like to do a little pinch of sugar in it to get rid of some of the acidity, probably like a teaspoon max. Then I have the ricotta that I made earlier. I'm just gonna put like half of this into each container. Um, I think it's probably around two cups. I know some people like to layer this, kind of like lasagna with your ziti, but I just like mixing it into the sauce because it's easier. Okay, I'm just gonna split this pasta in half and for mine, I'm gonna put it right in the skillet and put it in the oven in the skillet. And for Taylor's, I'm gonna put it in a nine by 13 dish if I have a I have a clean one <laughs> um, because I don't have two big cast iron pans that I can use for baking. Okay, that's in the oven and it's gonna bake for 20 minutes, but I'll probably actually just bake it for 15 and do the broil for like the last five minutes or so. So it's got a nice crispy cheese on top. I usually would serve this with a veggie, but I completely forgot to get them at the store, so. Okay guys, I'm filming this all out of order because of the file issues, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I apologize for the wackiness of this one, but I hope you still enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.